And hello fellow Taker Space Bandit here with another episode of World of Tanks and today we're gonna be taking out T-62A tier 10 Russian medium tank. As we know in the last update T-62A got a buff to the rate of fire and we're gonna take this tank out on the field and see what it can do right now. So first what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at commander setup which is quite normal setup for most of my tanks. The commander has six cents, camouflage, born leader, rapid loading, situational awareness, muffled shot, run and gun, steady aim, and gunsmith. So as you notice here, my tank is mostly optimized for gun performance. I know the gun on this tank is already good, but I want it to be super good with pinpoint accuracy, especially if you're shooting from long distance, you will hit those weak points that you want to hit. We're also using camouflage and muffled shot because this tank has relatively good camo. So we're optimizing that a little bit and situational awareness will give us a view range boost. Now let's take a look at our equipment, what we're carrying on this tank. So we currently have it equipped with advanced optics, advanced loader and gun stabilizer. Again, gun stabilizer might not be necessary with my setup you could potentially run vents instead of gun stabilizer or vents instead of rapid loading but i wanted to optimize this gun to the best performance you can get and trust me the game you're going to see will showcase that although i'm still surprised because in some cases i was missing shots which i shouldn't have been missing and it wasn't out of my fault to be honest and i'll point that out in the replay now let's take a look at our gun stats so as you can see we pushed that accuracy down to 0.19 which is impressive quite impressive right question is is it really necessary maybe not maybe you can optimize this tank more for camouflage if you want or you can throw in let's say firefighting skill because if you show your engine this tank will probably get lit on fire but i'm playing this tank mostly frontally i'm gonna try not to expose my rear to the opposition and i want to take advantage of that rate of fire as you can see my vision range is 440 meters and my still concealment is 327 so i could be outspotted by tanks that have view range of 480 or something of that nature but those tanks usually have worse concealment so it balances out at the end anyway let's jump into the gameplay with this tank so we find ourselves on Fisherman's Bay and we're going to have a solid, solid game here on Fisherman's Bay. Probably one of the best, if not the best games that I've had in this tank. And this game came after a long layoff. I haven't been playing the game in a while, guys, because I just couldn't get to it. But we got back at it and I noticed after I came back, my aim didn't go away my strategic thinking didn't go away although i did make a couple mistakes in this game and i will point them out to you so initially what we're gonna do as we always do we're gonna get ourselves in the middle of the map somewhere in a position e6 somewhere around there and we're gonna try to scoot there and spot guys that are crossing over to the town area so we're gonna use our mobility to get to that position quite fast and we'll see if we can spot something. Unfortunately, the 440 meters of view range might be a little bit too short to spot everyone all the way to the K line, but we're gonna at least try. So that's what we're gonna do right here. Now, this is a bit of a dangerous play because I'm overexposing my hole. If I get spotted in this situation, I can get easily targeted, but there are no light tanks on the opposing team. So I'm feeling brave right here and I'm pushing a little bit further. As you can see, I spotted these guys, but they're a little bit far away. So let's see if we can put a shell into this guy. Unfortunately, we hit something and we we're not able to hit him. But yeah, that's what I was thinking. That view range is a little bit too short. Anyway, let's look at our reload. We are at 4.7 seconds with the setup, which is absolutely crazy. And if we engage our combat ratios, we're going to drop down to 4.4 seconds. <laughs> For 320 alpha, I mean, amazing, absolutely amazing the way this rate of fire is right now. I just want to play this tank. Now, one thing you have to keep in mind is that this tank doesn't have any gun depression. It has only five degrees of gun depression. So you will be struggling, especially fighting the ridges. 
So it's really not a ridge line fighter. You want to fight this tank on a level ground or in the city, exposing only the turret. Turret is really fantastic. Probably the best turret in the game. One of the best turrets in the game on a medium tank. Anyway, so since no one really is challenging us in the middle here, we're going to push down a little bit further over here. And we're going to try to engage some of these guys like this Yak Tiger here. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to use our rate of fire to just shred him to pieces pretty much. That's what we're going to do. And at this point, I don't even feel like engaging my combat ratios, to be honest, because I'm hiding and then poking out. So there's no point engaging my combat ratios at this point. Here, it would probably help, but it doesn't matter. We have a rate of fire like this. We don't really need to use them, to be honest, guys. But in sticky situations, yeah, it always comes in handy. So anyway, we're going to chew down this E50 right now. And he's in a world of hurt. He's already taken out. And now we're going to focus on this chisel on this side of the map over here. And see if we can put some shells into it. This is... I was just trying to get a feel if there's any base campers. But as you notice there, someone was shooting at me. So we backed off from that. And we can engage him later. We don't have to engage him now. He's not really pushing us. So we're going to try to help out these guys in town. Unfortunately here, I thought that Kranvan was actually rotated. Or was it Emil 2? I think it was Emil 2. I think it was rotated. I thought it was the back of the turret. Unfortunately, it was the front of the turret. So I would have never penned that shot. But now I'm thinking I have no shots here. What do I do? What do I do? I really want to engage this chisel. I have no shots at the guys in the town. Right? So I'm checking right here. So I wanted to go after this chisel. But I want to be smart about it. I don't want to overexpose because there are TDs sitting at J1K1. So I loaded my heat. And we're going to just go straight through his turret. Here we put a shell into him. We didn't need heat shell for this. But once he faces us frontally like this, yeah, we're going to need our heat rounds to go through his turret cheeks. And that's exactly what we're doing right here. And we're using that dead wreck of a tank in front of us to protect ourselves from these guys that are sitting at J1 or K1 for that matter. Can we take this guy out? Yes, we can. And now we're going to drop off. And you saw a shell over there whistling over our turret. So now we know there's no one in the middle left. And since there's no one in the middle, these guys that are sitting at their base camp or at K1, they don't have shots into this area. There's no way because of the terrain. So we're just going to push this area here and we're going to engage these guys to get some extra damage because they're pretty much in no man's land right now. They're going to die. I prefer going between the buildings just in case Artie decides to shoot. So I decided to go after this guy instead of the medium tank. It's just my preference, to be honest. But we are going to get a little bit of damage out of this guy. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough time to aim for his drive wheel. If I did, that's what I would have done. But our friendlies were basically outnumbering him. And we just needed a shadow damage. That's all. That's what I was looking for right there. Anyway, this is going to be an interesting situation. And one trend that I found on this map lately. When our team or the opposition team wins the town, the game becomes kind of stagnant. No one really wants to push through the middle because then you get yourself exposed and you can actually get hit from two different angles. So I'm going to be careful about it. I'm going to go in the middle. I'm going to try to approach it so that the guys from K1 cannot hit me, yet I should be able to hit this Patriot. Although I got to be mindful because opposition won area A3 and they will have shots at me. As you can see, this chieftain over there, he has shots at me. So now I'm going to have to back off behind this building and we're going to try to put extra shells into this Patriot just some extra damage right there now we're going to scoot behind the building and we're going to try to lose our six cents now we're in a position where tanks from K1 cannot hit us yet we are putting that building in between us and whoever sitting at A2 so now this is what I'm talking about with no light tanks in the game I'm kind of a spotter, but I really don't want to push. I'm not really trusting our friendlies, to be honest. We have two medium tanks stuck at A8. And they'll be sitting there forever. And then I have two heavy tanks that are in the middle, plus a heavy tank on the K-line. So we're just going to play it cautious and very safe at this point. We're going to try to put some shells into that Centurion. That was a very narrow shot. We couldn't really put many shells into him right there. And here we're just going to be patient at this point. I know we're winning this game and I could probably push this very hard right now. I was thinking actually about pushing the H3 area somewhere around there and use the terrain to just poke my turret out. But I thought it was a bit too early because they still have three TDs in the game. 
two pretty big alpha high alpha tds Jagdpanzer e100 as well as tier 9 waffle plus there's also a swedish td sitting somewhere over there which has really good camo so last thing i want to do is get outspotted right so i decided to come on this side i know there's chieftain here and there was a machine i think oh no that was a chieftain not a machine but we can't really spot him so we're gonna try to put some shells into the centurion who gets spotted at the same time so we put one shell into him now we set him on fire is he gonna burn down no he did not so his crew must have had a firefighting skill right there good for him he manages to survive for a little bit longer so we're just looking for shots here as you can see our heavy tank spotted a couple of tds on this side of the map so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come around on this side here and we're gonna try to put some of the shots into this strv right here can we put a shell into him yes we can and he's gonna get taken out just like that but now we know that there is Jagdpanzer E100 in the opposition's area of the map at K1 and probably Waffles there as well but I haven't spotted him yet nobody has spotted him yet we spotted Jagdpanzer E100 here unfortunately I do not have heat loaded and I wouldn't be able to pan him from that angle in his superstructure so we're gonna switch to heat and we're gonna try to approach him make sure we play this hole down one thing I'm worried about is Artie I don't know what Artie sitting at this point I'm hoping it's sitting right in the corner at k1 or j1 but i didn't know at this point so we're going to push a little bit further to see if we can spot anything we're going to try to stay on the low ground we spot this centurion and we take him out of the game and now we're going to push this a little bit further if we stay in a low ground those tds in front of me will have to overexpose in order to hit me so it's going to be difficult shot for them and that's what i'm trying to do so we're going to approach into this position here we're going to see if we can spot them and hopefully i'm actually hoping that my friendlies are going to follow me right here so we spot this Jagdpanzer 100 unfortunately he has a shot at me so we have to back off but he bounces his shell off my turret so he was shooting ap if he was shooting heat rounds he would go probably directly through my turret although you know t62a's turret is so good you actually have to hit those cheeks in order to pen it but we spotted the other guy two big alpha guns right here and that's where i'm worried right now because i'm kind of scared of those two big guns i really don't want to push it i know i'm full hp and that's the advantage of keeping your hp until the end of the game but as you'll notice in a split second that doesn't mean anything against big guns anyway we're gonna try to put a shell into this guy this is gonna be a ghost shell guys right there that was a ghost shell that stuff still happens in the game unfortunately is this shot gonna go in yes it does but now Jagdpanzer 100 is looking at us so we're gonna drop back over here and we're just gonna try to bait him our friendly is capping i don't know why our friendly is capping i was hoping he would come here and help me in this situation guys this is not a good play i mean if we have numbers here we could have potentially taken this area so what i should have done here because yakpanzi 100 already fired i should have pushed that waffle take him out of the game and then go behind the yakpanzi 100 that was my first mistake Second mistake is that I'm going to disengage here because I see the Chieftain in the middle. So I'm going to try to help my friendlies put some shells into this Chieftain. So that's what we're going to do. We put a shell into his turret right there. But Jagdpanzer 100 doesn't care. He overexposed trying to hit me because whoever was capping is already dead. So I'm going to back off here. I'm going to try to put some shells into the superstructure of Jagdpanzer 100. Then Artie hits me. Then we're going to try to go under his gun. And this is the last mistake that I've made. I should have tracked this guy. Because if I tracked him, then he would have been on top of the ridge. And I should be able to reload in time so I can put shells into his lower plate. Or track him again and keep on juicing him. But yeah. Artillery pokes its ugly head and has to spoil my good game. Yes, that's always the case. Always the case, guys. An RD player on the opposing team turned out to be a decent player. So he relocated. He actually relocated into position A2 or something like that. And he was able to shut me down. Unfortunately, I should have played it smarter at the end. There was so much damage still left on the table that I could have gotten out of this game. Nevertheless, still a very good game. Anyway, I'm not going to show you the rest of this game because these guys were just driving around trying to find the artillery and they could not. So let's skip to the end of the game and see what happened there. So as you can see, our friendlies couldn't find the arty. And I don't know where the arty was, where it ran off, but I'm 
guessing that Artie was sitting somewhere in a position A7 because our Artie disengaged and went into the city and our team never checked that area over there. Anyway, we ended up with a victory. Fantastic game in T62A. What an awesome tank it is right now. I gotta tell you guys, it's incredible. We managed to put up 7.4k damage, 1620 XP, 3 kills, 31 direct hits. We also had 1892 assisted damage, which brings the total to 9.3k combined damage crazy absolutely crazy game we managed to get a stanker for this game yeah just a fantastic game in this tank strongly recommended guys if you don't care about gun depression then you will definitely love this tank because of the rate of fire anyway we finish on top of the team with 16 20 base xp just a fantastic game in this tank anyway guys i hope you enjoyed this video that's it for now until next time, happy tanking, Space Bandit, checking out.